what are some of the more con structural com components of framing? And with that comes like headers, beams, and girders, right? Transferring weight over openings, which would be windows or doors, or maybe a big living room open area where you need to add a beam up there or something like that when it comes to, to framing components. And so first of all, right out the gate, keeping it simple. If you've got a beam that you need to put in, if you've got a girder of some sort, if you've got a big bay window that maybe standard framing can't handle, go to wherever you got your materials and ask them if they can run beam specs for you, beam specifications. If they can, if you can tell them like, look, I'm holding up a roof, they're going to know, well, what's your snow load for your area? They're probably already going to know that. And you could say, well, I've got rafters at 24 inches on center, 16 on center. And they know like, oh, the dead load is 10 pounds, 20 pounds. And they're also going to know, well, you know, where I'm at, 30 pounds snow load versus down south might be 15 or something, right? So they can run and punch all those numbers in and uh, they can spit out your beam size and you can purchase that size or maybe you already have it. They can even do that for dimensional lumber. Say you want to run two two by tens, 10 feet, but the charts say you can only run it eight. As an inspector, I've approved beam specs that have been run from, um, you know, from an approved um, uh, software to show that it would meet that requirement, right? That the deflection and um, uh, the weight that it's holding, it can support it and, and that it would pass those requirements. And so if you have those sheets on site when your inspector shows up, or maybe you don't even need a permit, but you're just like, I want to make sure this thing's structurally sound, print those things out. Just say, hey, can I get a copy of those beam specs? Um, I want to have them on site, file them away in case anybody ever asks anything. They might tell you like, look, dimensional lumber will not do that. You need to put in a glue lamb or an LVL or some other type of manufactured beam product. Um, but that's, that's simple. That's number one right out the gate is go get beam specs for whatever it is you want to put in. And if you decide to just stick with prescriptive, which would be whatever the code allows you to do, just make sure that you kind of run through the charts properly or talk to your building department and just say, Hey, you know, here's what I have. Here's what I want to use. Is that okay? And usually if you're submitting any drawings or something, they're going to tell you what you need to have. But if they don't, um, or if you're curious, you could ask them and they could look it up for you as well. So let's dive into standard framing of it and we'll look at the charts. I'll kind of show you how the charts lay out. So you have an idea what I'm talking about. And, um, and then I'll show you a few pictures of just kind of standard framing for, for headers and beams and so on and so forth. So here would be just kind of standard little detail, right? So here is the header. It could be where we're at. We see two, two by tens. A lot of people will just put in two, two by tens because it's kind of just spans just about everything in our area and you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, we have a builder in the area who has stamped engineer plans. So if it's got an engineer stamp on it, that engineer takes all the risk for that design and whatever they put on there should be good to go, right? They're a licensed engineer in the state that you're at. And so we have, uh, they put in two, two by sixes, which we don't see a lot in our area based on our snow load and everything, but we've got stamped drawings for it. And so we allow it two, two by sixes. We see two, two by tens a lot though. But uh, anyways, um, here would be a header, right? So over a window opening, maybe this is a door or something else like that. And then here would be the jack or trimmer studs that sit underneath it that hold the header up. So this is one of the big things as an inspector that I, I call a lot is how many jack studs do you need underneath of this header? A lot of times, depending on how wide it is, because a lot of people do big open areas in their new houses these days, and so the span of the roof gets big, right? It could span, you know, 30, 40 feet. Well, that's a lot of weight of that roof. And it's picking up half the load that comes down on those walls. And then it has to come down over the top of those windows and transfer across. And so they'll ask for double or two jack studs, which mean two on each side. So if you're ever in doubt and you have the materials, double up your jack studs. If you get to a bigger window opening in general, I would tell you, you know, you are starting at three, four foot windows or bigger patios, just put in double jack studs, save yourself the heartache and, uh, 
and just put in double jack studs. This particular one right here is what they call a king stud. So you're always going to have a jack stud, king stud, minimum, right? Jack stud, king stud, king stud butts in and nails into the side of the header. And the jack or the trimmer stud is what holds up the header, okay? Um, let's look at... Here's a couple other details. We don't see this very often where we're at, but this is like a single um, a single piece header. So it's not doubled up. They're just using one two by material, one two by 10, one two by 12, one two by six. And then you've got kind of a bottom and a top plate that kind of wrap it, right? It says plate to header connection in accordance with. They've got their jack stud. Um, again, jack stud, same thing, and then they've actually crippled or framed above it to get to the top plate. Here they're actually using the top plate as part of the wrap for, for this kind of box header. It's alternative single, single member header without cripple. And then here's a single member header in exterior bearing wall. Again, I don't see these a lot, but I want to make sure you know they're out there in case you use that method where you're at. Here's also another instance where they've doubled up the rim. So we talked about floor systems having kind of a rim board that goes around, ties everything together. Here they've actually doubled it up over the openings and then hangered their joists. And that way the load is strong enough. This right here meets the requirement for your header. And they're transferring that load over the top of that opening. So rim board header construction. It's another option that's out there. So let's look at the charts. Okay, so girder spans and header spans for exterior bearing walls. So this is if you if you're going off a prescriptive method and um, and you don't and you don't have any beam specs. It's not designed. It's not engineered. And you're like, what do I need? Well, first you got to know is well, what are you holding up? So are you holding up a roof and a ceiling only? Are you holding up a floor that has a center bearing wall in it? Are you holding up a floor that has no bearing in it? Okay, and this is continued. So there's another page that I'll show you where maybe it's two stories or three stories high, right? Center bearing or no center bearing wall. So you got to figure out what it is that you're doing. And then you would hop into here and you'd say, okay, well, what's my snow load, right? My ground snow load. So where we're at, I believe that we're 39, I believe is the actual number. And so we hop up here to 50. And then we talk about building width, okay? If you're down south and you only have a 15 pound snow load, well, you're gonna be in this column right here, okay? And then you're gonna talk about building width. Well, like I said, some houses get really wide and they span really far, the roofs do, okay? And so, well, if we're spanning right here, depending on what you're doing, building width. So it's not even really necessarily talking about just the roof. It's just saying building width. Okay. And so if you get into 36, maybe you're 25, 26, well, you should be hopping to the next column. Okay. So if we're holding up, say just a roof and we've got, you know, like I said, we use two, two by tens all the time. So two, two by tens. And I span all the way over here and I get into 24. My building width is 24 between 12 and 24. I'm going to be able to span five foot 11, but I need two jack studs. So again, it's back to that jack stud thing. Um, NG would be just the jack stud component of it. Here's a situation. Two two by sixes can span three foot 11 with a single jack stud. So you could go through this chart and you could say, well, what works for what I'm doing? Um, you know, if I, if I get up to 36, if I get over 36, well, then technically you should probably have some type of design professional involved in it, right? Uh, but you could probably just over design it and your building department would, might be able to look at it and be like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that's going to work. You know, we've seen that work and we're going to allow it. Um, but they might also tell you like, look, you're going to need an architect or an engineer to sign off on something that you're doing, which again is why I would take you back to go down to the building, uh, uh, the lumber yard where you got your materials and say, Hey, I need you to design me a beam that will fit right here. That way you have documentation of it. You tell them to print it out. You submit that with your drawings. They look at it. Hopefully they'll just stamp it, say it's good. 
and you don't have to get any of those engineers and those designers involved for your home project, right? You can just kind of keep plowing through it. Um, what's another one? So here they actually have singles, okay? So it's back to that single design. So a single two by 10 can span four foot at 24, in, uh, 24 foot wide building, can span four foot with two jack studs. That's not that bad. You have any a lot of windows these days are four feet that would not be a bad situation you could go frame it up and have it set up to just have a single two by ten structurally it, it meets the requirements you're saving on a little bit of material you just have to have the double jack studs in there should be okay right so that's something to think about when you're working through your design on your headers um, i want to show you the other chart real fast just so that kind of know what i'm talking about so this would be the other chart. So here you see how they're showing, you know, holding up multiple floors, holding up multiple floors without a single bearing wall. Um, we also have uh, girder and header spans for interior bearing walls. So are they holding up one floor, are they holding up two floors, because typically nowadays roofs will go end to end. So they're not necessarily gonna pick up a roof load, they're just gonna pick up a floor. Same thing, it's gonna tell you, well, two two by tens, building width is 24. Yeah, uh, you can go six foot six with two jack studs. Uh, two two by eights, you can go five foot five with one jack stud. So you can kind of see how that works. They have girder and header spans for open porches, okay? So they kind of go through the gamut of what it is that you're working on. So if that kind of, that, that, that should follow you through header design, right? And I kind of gave you the quick fix on how to get through headers as far as beam specs are concerned. Um, what about a few, um, what about a few pictures? I'll show you a few pictures. Okay, so here's a few pictures, just kind of quick reference for you. So for this particular house, you know, they've got what looks to be two two by tens. This is a two by six wall. They got about two and a half inches there. And two two by tens is, you know, three inches wide. And they've got a uh, single jack stud that carries down, holds the load right there. Okay, so that's pretty standard framing. I see that all the time. Here's the instance of a beam. So it's holding up this uh, front entry. Okay, and they've used a hanger. So you can use hangers. Just make sure they're sized and you have proper fasteners if you use a hanger. Um, you know, you're not, might not be able to just use standard nails. They might want something that's a little beefier than that, some type of structural screw. So just make sure you're covered there. Um, if you do notch into the house with a beam, so it's sitting on studs in the house, make sure you pocket it, meaning like add studs to each side of it. So you might actually need like four studs there, right? Like two jacks and then the doubles. Um, put a strap on it, a metal connection on it. Here would be like an egress window. So they've used treated material everywhere. They're touching concrete, right? And so they've just added a bunch of um, header material up in here. Usually with these, you know, there's not a lot of room to play with. So we just try to tell people, at least where I'm at, you know, get as much as you can in there. Sometimes I've seen like five two by fours. And I can't tell you that's necessarily in the charts, but we know that we're covered, right? They've done the best they could with the space they had and they made it better than it was. Here's another example of a kind of a post to beam connection for outside. Here would be an existing house where they've gone in and added a header. They have their jacks underneath of it. They're missing their cripples up here, which was probably something that I called as part of a, a correction call. I just said, hey, you know, make sure you get a couple cripples in there before you insulate. Um, let's see here, like interior. So this would be like a garage separation wall. And you see they put the header way up above, which is fine. You're still transferring the load. All you've done in here is just infill framed it. That's totally fine. You can put your headers up above. They don't have to be right at window level. Uh, let's see here. Here's double jack studs right here. Here's their uh, double top plates. Here's their king stud right here. So it's kind of pulling everything together. This particular one, it looks like they were gonna do a double window. Maybe their window hadn't arrived yet or they decided to, to delete it. Um, but when they framed it, they put in double jack studs. Looks like it's holding the floor up and there's probably a, another, uh, you know, the roof above it. So it's picking up quite a bit more weight. 
um, interior looks like. So we got, we're holding up eye joists, the floor system again, and they've gone in and pocketed for the beam to sit underneath. And then they've got more than enough jack studs underneath to hold and transfer that weight down. So that kind of, should kind of cover the basis for, um, for headers, right? I didn't touch a lot on beams and touch a lot on girders because most of the time that stuff is going to be design, right? You're going to go in and you're going to tell your lumber yard how far you're spanning and they're going to tell you what type of beam you need to put in. You're going to have those specs on site and they're going to be able to, uh, you're going to be able to give those to your inspector or when you submit for your plans. So when it comes to actually putting the thing together, because again, this is one of my most favorite parts is again, it comes back to just layout, right? So you got these, you know, you got your bottom, your bottom plate and your top plate, you're going to slap them together. You're going to be able to lay out, mark each of them, you know, whatever your stud layout is 24, 26 or 24 inches on center or 16 inches on center, right? So you're just going to mark it. But then when you get to your opening, right, you've got a window there. So you might end up doing, and you can write on there, you know, you do a mark and you say king stud right next to it, mark, trimmer, or jack stud. And then you pull your width and then you might have, you mark and say cripple, cripple, or just leave that space open and infill that framing later. You know, maybe you wait and see what you have for materials left over. Come infill that cripple and that sill for where your window, is, window will sit. Um, and then you run your header. And then you have another jack, and then you have your king stud, and then you're back into your layout again. So you can do it all off of these top and bottom plates, separate them, start, and you just crown your studs and start laying them out and just know, hey, well, if I got a jack stud here, I'm going to have to cut out nine and a half inches for two by tens, and it'll sit right in there. You nail it all in, lift it into place, and hopefully you should be good to go. Okay. I hope that this helps you out with wall framing. I hope you have fun with it, and uh, and and if you have questions, if there's something that I'm missing here, shoot me an email, and uh, we'll see if I can find the answer for you.